Hi, Ann Cornick from Paint and Porcelain. I'm here to teach beginners how to get started in China painting and also and to encourage experienced painters to paint along with us. And this week we're going to be doing pink dogwood. If you are new to us, that we started out this whole series a year ago with um, the wild rose. So this is um, on the YouTube now, uh, on YouTube. I put, um, a, I think it's a two-part um, program about this. You can look under playlists or you can just search wild roses. And um, this is a free study on my uh, paint and porcelain site. So for beginners, you can go to my paint and porcelain site, get the free study, download it, you get it instantly. You go through the process as if you're gonna pay for it, but it does, doesn't charge you anything. And then you can go to YouTube and follow step-by-step step how to do this plate. So going back to basics again, because we have some new people that have joined in the last year, I figured that today would be a good day to do dogwood. Dogwood is very, very similar uh, to um, wild roses in a lot of ways. It's, it's a relatively flat, um, or you can paint it as a relatively flat um, flower. I learned a little bit as I was putting this together. So let me, let me share that with you because it was really interesting to me. First of all, I wanted to introduce new colors. And as the season, the second season goes on, what I'm going to be doing uh, is I'm going to be taking and uh, putting out there two palettes on the studies. I'm going to put a beginner palette so that if you're a beginner, you don't have to go out and buy a million paints, you can use basic paints. And I'm also going to put what I call, what I'm going to call uh, like a full palette. So if you want to experiment, you want to buy a couple of new paints, or if you have a lot of paints and you want to use them, uh, then that would be an opportunity for you to use the full palette. One of the things that I learned from Brigitte Porter, um, which I found very, very helpful, was she always said, go out in your garden and um, I'll go out in your garden and sketch. So I sketched, and these are from uh, my other house. These were my pink um, dogwood. And I sketched them. And then she said, use, can you see here? I used uh, pencils. She said, use color pencils and go in and add the colors so that you know exactly where it is. This has been extremely helpful. I have a whole sketchbook here. I use it for studies. Um, I use it for practice. I actually probably sketch better than I paint sometimes. So it's very helpful. Um, the flowers need to be big. This was my first attempt and I hate it. <laughs> the flowers are so little. They were really hard to work on. This is only a first fire, but I was not thrilled. And again, I learned something else with this. Um, I was trying to use several colors that were new to me. And quite frankly, when you use too many colors that you're not familiar with, uh, you find yourself in a quandary about what to put where, you don't know how they're gonna fire, you don't know how they're gonna behave. So don't try too many new colors at one time. And I went ahead and I just drew it on, and I used a Sharpie, and I used the pictures that I had sketched earlier, and I tried to limit it to just, um, I think there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, five to seven flowers on a plate like this, and then I painted them in, and I was happy. Now, I have tried putting the flower in and then putting a background and firing it, but that didn't work. Then I tried putting the background in and painting the flower over the top of it. That didn't work for me. So we're just gonna be painting the basic flower today and then we're gonna fire it and then we'll play with the backgrounds next week. Okay, the palette on this is a little odd, but interesting. I'm using apricot. This is apricot blush. I really like it. I'm using a full load of that with a half load of either Persian or you can use pompadour if you have it now. Uh, if you don't have these colors and you're a beginner, Persian or pomp pompadour is what you would probably have. Use it very lightly, very lightly, like just the corner of your brush. This is shading green. If you're a beginner, you could use warm brown green. This is a uh, warm brown gray, which I'm going to be using for the um, branches. But you could use the, um, the rich brown, just use it very lightly. Albert or Trenton yellow will work for you. If you have Albert, that should be, um, or mixing yellow, that should be part of your basic palette. Trenton uh, ivory also works very well. Um, and then finally, I'm going to be using um, chartreuse and beginners should have chartreuse. Unlike 
the wild rose where you paint the inside and then you feather to the outside of the petal. You will see on these, it's only the outside that's actually colored. So we're always going to paint towards the outside. I have a number 10 brush that I'm going to use. It's a quill brush. Um, it's a nice one. It's like this that I'm going to be using. A quill brush is one that has like this kind of a bottom to it. And I'm going to do a full load of apricot blush and a side load of either the Persian or the Pomp. And uh, let's start with this floppy flower here. With this one, you're going to start in the middle. Oops, I got red on there. I don't know where that came from. Oh, I'll have to get that off. I don't know why it's on there. And you just paint a little towards the middle like that, but then the bulk of what you're going to be painting is going to be at the top. So you're going to come down and paint. I'm sorry, you can't really see, can you? Here, let's get it up here. You're going to come down and paint the top. You're going to paint here and here. The same thing with this side. You might want to put a little bit of shading. You're going to have shading here and here. You put a little bit of shading there and then just paint the edge. And you might want to put a little here only because you'll you'll lose the edge if you don't know where it is. Now let's put a little more dark down here. There we go. And then the same thing on this side, you're going to put the that you're going to put the shadow closest cuz this this is actually on top. And then you're going to paint just the edge. So it's a little bit different than what we're used to. You may have to wipe out a little of that and redo it just to get it the way you want it. Make sure you leave a lot of white because as I showed you, the middle of these is very white. It doesn't, it doesn't really have um, any other color in the center. Same thing with this one. Now that one I did with Persian, this one I'm going to do with Pomp. So I don't know if you can tell, this is, this is a regular leaf. This one flops off this way, this one flops off that way, and this is the bottom one, it's turned up in front. So we're going to start with the top leaf because that's the easiest, and we're going to come around. Let me get a little more color on there. Come around, more color. <laughs> like that, and then we're gonna come around like that, and we're gonna pull it towards the center. And this is what we're using as a guide. Do you see how that looks? Pretty close, right? I'm looking at this one right here, that one right there, and you can see it's pretty close. Okay, then you're gonna do this one on this side. And you're doing little, almost like little C strokes. Full load of the blush, side load of the pomp. If you don't have blush, then just use the side load of the pomp and go very, very carefully. And I'm just doing this because it's turned over. I'm just going to put a little color on it. And the only reason I'm putting color on it is because that would be the bottom of the leaf, or the top of the petal, and that's why I'm putting the color on there. Let me get a little more color in there. There we go. Okay. All right. Now, even though I'm still using the same colors, I'm cleaning my brush because after a while, it gets a little muddy, kind of. I'm going to do these two. They're in the back here. And because they're behind, you don't need to be real explicit with them. And I think I'm going to stick predominantly with just that blush because I really, I don't want them to stick out like a sore thumb. I just want them to be back there. So I'm just going to put these two back here. And then we're going to go to this guy. He has a turn up here and a turn up there. 
like a turn back. The leaf kind of cups. So we're going to start with the easiest leaf, which is this one right up here on top. And we're just going to let me get more. Here we go. And then we're going to come down this side a little bit and then just feather it. You want them to be dark at the top. And I know that's kind of counterintuitive to a lot of people. This one, I'm going to take and put, oh, jeez, my red on this side. And then I'm going to pull it around this way a little. And I'm going to pull it down this side just a tad. You don't have to do too much. And then I'm going to feather it. And the same thing with this one here. This one's flipped over, so I'm going to just do the flip and the color. Then I'm going to take the lighter color. So that was my pomp. Here, let me hold it up because I know some people say I don't hold it up long enough and they want to be able to see what I've done. Now I'm going to go after this with the blush and this with the blush and this with the blush. The ones that are flipped over, I'm going to go a little bit with the blush because I need to have them there or when I fire, I'm just going to have white china. So I want to do a little bit here. And I'm going to do a little bit over here. I'm going to leave the white at the top, if I can. And then we'll go back to full load of the blush, apricot blush, and I'm going to do this guy down here. I've decided I want to do him strictly as a regular open leaf. I can't have too many of these fancy leaves on one. It'll just drive me crazy. So there we go. I'm going right here. I'm just going to put a little bit of pink there. Pull it down a little. I will not, won't touch anything else here because it was painted a while ago. Okay, now I'm going over to this flip. And you know what we're going to do with this flip up here. This one. We're going to start and we're going to do the... Oh, that side that side, come down a tad, and I'm just going to feather it down so that it's not quite so, there we go. Then we're going to put some dark on this side, let me get a little more dark there, and we're going to get a little dark on this side, and just do the top here. And the top here. I want to do a little more dark. There we go. There we go. Better. Okay. And we have the final one over here. It's an open. One goes this way with, there's a little turnover there. This one and this one and this one. That's the only one that has the turnover. There's only one with a turnover. So we're going to start at the top again because it's just the easiest. And we're going to come around this way. Now, if you can leave the center right here, if you can leave that kind of open, because we're going to have to go back and kind of add um, white there or you know remove some color there on some of them you, that would be good because um, they do have kind of a white uh, area up there see here they have a little bit of a white area so if you can leave that hmm. let me see this is a little bit much. Let me just try this again. I'm going to go back and just pull it down lightly. There we go. But that would be good because now this is the turnover right here. 
So I'm going to flip it and I'm just going to do the bottom of the turnover with that lighter color so that I don't lose it when I fire it. I want to remember it's there. And then I'm going to turn it this way and work out from here. And the same thing on this side. I'm going to just work out from the middle. Trying to get most of the color on the edges and the sides. You don't want it in the middle. So it's a little bit of a challenge. If you're used to painting white ones, you may have done something similar um, with like a, a blue or a water green or something, but I honestly, it, it's not quite as Not quite as easy to, to do the color. I think it's easier to do the color when you have a color. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take, I have a number four. It looks like this. It's real easy to, oh, it's got stuff on it. Let's clean it off. It's real easy to um, draw with. It's kind of a th like a thick liner. That's why I like it. I'm going to take shading green. If you have a uh, beginner palette, you could use a warm brown green. And I'm just going to start, uh, let's make it a little heavier than that. I'm just going to start kind of dabbing around in there. You want little dots. You want little dots over here. I know it's a little dark. And you have a little bit of um, chartreuse, so you could mix it with the chartreuse just a little bit so that you... Um, as you get out to this area out here, it's not quite as dark. Okay. Then I'm going to take my favorite thing of all time. So that's what I've done so far. I've just filled them in. Now I'm taking my Pico Pay, and I'm just going to make little dots. See how I made the little dots there? I'm going to do the same thing here. They don't have to be extra special dots. They can be anything as long as you touch and you're going to get paint on your pico pay you're going to have to wipe it off and then go back in then i'm going to take albert yellow trenton ivory whatever you have and just dab little a little yellow in there in those same spots where i made the dots and here too my yellow is giving up the ghost here. Let me, I think I got green on my brush. Clean my brush. Yeah, I do like the Trenton Ivory a little better. And you can see they have these little fuzzies. Let me show you. Here's a pretty good one. They have these little fuzzies in the middle with these little yellow dots coming off of them. You could use a liner if you have a liner. Then I go back in again with my Pico Pay and just add a little bit of a highlight here and there. I'm not going to be as exact as some people would like to be. But this is the first fire. If you need to clean it up on the second fire, you can do that too. You can make the little dots, really dots on the second fire if you need to. Okay, the final thing is the leaves. Now, um, the leaves are really kind of a shiny green. They're a pretty green. So um, I'm going to use chartreuse on the first coat, and then I'm going to go back and probably do um, uh, a darker green on the second coat. Uh, I have a couple little leaves up here. Um, and I have these three and these three. I don't have a whole lot of leaves. So I'm going to fold over with. Now, for those of you that, um, let, me, let me show you what the leaf looks like. The leaf, actually the small leaves like these, see these here? They actually look almost like rose leaves because they're long and they're a little longer, but they still have the same point on the end as the rose leaves. So... You know, if you know how to do a rose leaf, and for beginners, let me show you what that looks like. You're going to take, 
I'm going to put a little bit of Persian on this. You're going to take, fully load your brush with the green. Um, I'm side loading, corner loading really, with just a little Persian. And I'm going to go like this. I'm going to go to the center line, away from the center line. Then I'm going to turn it, and I'm just going to do the tip. And I like to have a little color on that tip, usually. Now, I might also add a little bit of the shading green. You're going to go to the center line. Away from the center line. So you're doing a C up to the center line, a C away from the center line. Flip it and do just the edge, just the tip. I think I like the shading green better. So what I'm doing, I think that I like better is I'm using the shading green with the chartreuse. Full load of chartreuse, just the thumb side. If you're left-handed, it's always your thumb side. If you're right-handed, it's your thumb side corner load with the darker color. Turn it around and come out like this. That's like as simple as they come. With these little guys, I'm just going to pull them out. I'm not going to do anything too special with them. And then we're going to do these fellas down here. Same thing. To the center. I don't have a line on that one, but you can see where the center is. Away from the center, out to the point. And I reload my color each time because I think you get a better result. To the center, away from the center, and just the point. It automatically will give you these little highlights if you do that. It's always hard for a beginner to get highlights, I think, and that's what we're really focusing on. So beginners, if you want highlights, this is a good way to get it. To the center, away from the center, and then just the tip. And that way you'll get, you'll get enough color so that when you fire it, you can find your leaves again. But at the same time, um, you have a nice highlight there. Alrighty, the final thing we're gonna do is our, our, our branches. The branches on the um, on the dogwood, they have a double kind of a. Hmm, let me see if I could show you on here. I thought there was one that was really good. Yeah, here. This one, you see here, they kind of have a double little branch, and then they come into a full branch to support the flower. So that's what we're going to kind of do on some of these. If you see a double branch of them. What the heck is she doing? I'm starting out with the, my warm brown gray because I just like warm brown gray. And that will be the lighter color anyway. So you might want to use the warm brown gray this time and then you can add more of the, um, the darker brown the next time. Be careful, don't add too much like I did just then. Oil because you, it will run. And I'm just, I'm just filling in you want to do it from the from the leaves too. I'm just filling in the, the branch. I'm not happy with that. If you're not happy with something, China paint can be wiped off. That's what you do. There, there. Much better. And then I take a dry brush, no oil, no nothing, and I can go through and shape things a little bit. It just works better than to try to do it with oil on your brush. Here, I'm going to go up and I'm going to do this guy. And like I said, they have a double support. I'm going to do a little bit of this guy here, there. Now remember, I drew this all freehand, so. This is not a pattern. I just sort of have to make it up as I go. I noticed I missed a leaf. Oh, 
Okay, here we go. I missed a leaf right here. Oh, help if I had some paint on there. There. Okay. And back to the warm brown gray. I'm just putting the putting the stems in. I'm not going to do anything fancy on this one. I do it backhand because I hold my brush with two fingers. My teachers, my I went to a Catholic school, the teachers always yelled at me, you're holding your brush wrong, you're holding your pen wrong, but that's just the way I hold it. And then the final area is over here. And you're gonna do the double, you're gonna bring one up this way and another one sort of up this way. And I need to clean that up a little. If you can see, I've got right here, I've got um, bumps and bruises and things, and just clean it up. Okay, Pico Pay or your regular eraser. Now, there's this kind of an eraser. This is the one I'm going to use. And I'm just going to clean things up. I'm going to clean it up here where I have my turn backs just to make sure. And because I don't have a lot of paint up there, it's not going to, it's not going to really affect. You won't get the little lines I did there, but you won't usually get the little lines. Let me get my dry brush. Where's my dry brush? Here it is. I'm going to put my dry brush up here and just pull that down. A dry brush seems to work better for me than something that has paint on it. If I'm going to be, I'm going to pull that out there. Pull that out there. Take my dry brush and just make sure my lines are gone. Either push them up, pull them down, whatever I need to do. Okay. Now, on the very edge of these guys here, they have like a little divot. And that divot almost looks like it's burned. It has a little bit of brown around it. So I'm going to put that in now so that I have it. I'm going to use this brush again, my number four, the one that's kind of like a liner. And I'm just going to put it on the ends. Can you see here? I'm just putting it here. You may have to wipe out a little bit of your color, but you shouldn't have to wipe out too much. And I'm going to put it here. So when wherever there's a, see here, there's a divot right here. I'm going to put it there. Um, here there's a divot. I might have to use my rich brown to make it a little darker. There, there's a divot. Here's a divot. Uh, here's a divot. And I'm just gonna push the Paint a little bit away from it. Pull it away. Let me go back here and where's my, there it is. I think I like the, the brown better. So I'm gonna go back and do these with rich brown again because I think it, it just shows up a little better. Can you see what I've done so far? I've done this one and this one. This one, I'm gonna do it here. Here, I'm going to do it here. No other place on there. Over here, you would do it here. And here. Wherever you make the notch. When you're drawing the, the uh, leaf, let me get it. when you're drawing the, the petal, you're going to draw the petal. It's almost like a heart shaped. It comes in like this, and then it comes out like this and down. This is the divot that I'm working on right now, just so you know. There are four petals on this. 
So if you want to draw it freehand, that would be the way to draw it. Over, and you don't need to make that divot on all of them. You just make it on the ones that, you know, where they're, they're actually going to show. Here it's turned back. It wouldn't show there. Here it's not, so it probably would. Um, and here I have a divot at the top here. Mm -hmm. I have one here, here. That's about it. And if any of them are too dark, you can just lighten it up by using a dry brush, going in and just playing a little bit with it. There you go. We will work, fire this now. I, you know, if you want, you can put your name on here now or you can wait. Um, and then I will trace this so that we actually have a line drawing because I really, I like this one. This one turned out pretty well. Okay, so pick up those brushes. Keep painting, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed the program, and I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe so that other people can learn more about China painting and we can get the word out to more people. Uh, you also can look at the links below. Uh, my paintandporcelain.com website has a lot of freebies and printables for uh, new and experienced painters, as well as studies, supplies, and even some of my hand-painted china. So thank you again, and I'll see you next time.